Download our app, One Islam TV. The top rated Muslim streaming platform in the world, available on these platforms. Now what I want to mention is jinn possession. To begin with, let's look at why do jinn possess people. It's important to note that jinn possession is a reality. There are those who deny it. However, it has been agreed upon by the consensus of the scholars and it's something that can be sensed as well. So, jinn possess people for three main reasons. Number one, out of love. Number one, out of love. So jinn, they fall in love with people. And this is extremely important for our sisters especially. So for example, you're leaving the house and you're not wearing the correct hijab. You're not properly covered. Or you are wearing a lot of makeup and you have beautified yourself and you're leaving the home. Then don't forget that there are other creations besides men. There are men who are going to look at you. But at the same time, a jinn may fall in love with you. And this is something very, very common. I had a case where a jinn had possessed a sister. She was waiting at the bus stop and the jinn fell in love with her. She was walking through a park and the jinn followed her. She was waiting at the bus stop and the jinn fell in love with her and it actually possessed her. And when they fall in love, they're very, very difficult to remove because their love is like almost a blind type of love. It's like I would rather die than leave this individual. And it's very romanticized. And uh, you know, in this way, they will say, look, I'm not going to leave. I'd rather die than leave her. They fall in love very, very easily for some reason. Okay, so a jinn may possess an individual out of love. Likewise, the second reason why a jinn may possess is out of revenge, due to revenge. Okay, so I'm sitting here, I throw something across the room and I can't see, but there's a jinn there. And it harms the jinn or it may kill one of the jinn's children. And as a result of that, possesses, uh, the jinn possesses this individual. So for example, there was a 15 year old boy and we found him in the street trying to strangle himself to death with his own hands. He had his own hands around his neck and he was trying to strangle himself to death. So we carried him into the masjid, into the back of the masjid and we began to make ruqya. We began to make the ruqya and the boy, he was completely unconscious. Then immediately he sort of, his eyes shot open and he sat up and the, the jinn began to speak and he began to say, I'm going to kill him, I'm going to kill him. Why? Why are you going to kill him? And the answer was because he was running through the park and it was night time and he was running through the park and he stepped on one of the children of the jinn. He stepped on one of the jinn, jinn's children and clearly he, ha he hadn't said Bismillah or he hadn't uh, invoked the protection of Allah. Therefore, he stepped on one of the, the jinn's children and I think he harmed it or he must have killed it and the jinn was now seeking to take revenge. It was now wanting to kill this individual and of course, if it had done so, then it would have been said, this boy strangled himself, it was suicide. But of course, it wasn't really suicide because he was compelled and being forced. So this jinn, it was a Muslim jinn. So we reminded it to fear Allah, reminded it that we can't see them. They can see us, but we can't see them. So it was a mistake. So you can't do this type of oppression. And eventually, Alhamdulillah, the jinn left. The third reason why jinn will possess an individual is due to sihr, due to magic, being sent by the magician. So the magician, he performs his magic and he does acts of worship to the jinn. And then the jinn will say, right, you have lowered yourself and you've humiliated yourself and you've worshipped us. Now, what do you need from us? And he will say, I need you to go and harm such and such an individual. I need you to go and uh, possess such and such an individual. So then he goes and he uh, sends the jinn and the jinn will now go and try and possess the individual. They will try and possess that individual in order to achieve their objective. So if they possess the wife, then she will become possessed and the husband will be thinking, you know, my wife's character has changed so much. We never used to argue. Now we argue over the smallest of things. 
Now she curses my mother, she curses my sister, she curses my family. All of these different things. Immediately her character will begin to change. And this is due to uh, jinn possession. Now let's have a look at some signs of jinn possession, some signs and symptoms of jinn possession. It's important to note that you may have or you may exhibit one or more of these signs, but that doesn't mean that you are possessed. Okay, that doesn't mean that you are possessed. For example, there was a situation where there was a brother who he said, you know, when I read the Quran from memory, I'm okay. But when I read the Quran from the Mus'haf, from the actual book, I get a really bad headache. I get a really, really bad headache. So the brother began to think, perhaps I am possessed. It turned out he had uh, poor vision and he needed glasses. So when he was looking at the Mus'haf, he would get these problems. Okay, so let's not rush to diagnose ourselves. Let's not rush to say I'm possessed. Let's not have these constant naggings from the shayateen that, oh, you're possessed, you're under magic, you've got evil eye. No, have husna dhan. Have high, high thoughts and good thoughts about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the first sign or one of the signs is there may be a sudden change in the personality or character of that individual. There used to be somebody who was very gentle. There used to be somebody who was flexible. There used to be somebody who was caring and loving. Then suddenly there's a sudden switch in their character or a sudden switch in their personality. Now they are very harsh, they are very rough and tough. The woman from being a, a, a woman who was perhaps able to be patient and bear patiently, now all she wants to do is argue, all she wants to do is curse, all she wants to do is blame, etc, etc. All of these things, all of these things, they may be due to jinn possession. The individual may have fits. So you may find that they just have random blackouts, often in the toilet or after leaving the toilet, because the toilet is a place of filth. And this is where the shayateen reside. So often in the toilet, they will have a blackout or they will walk out of the toilet and they will just black out. Likewise, likewise, there's going to be or there may be a hatred to the Quran or a hatred of the Adhan. As we have mentioned in previous episodes, that when the, uh, the Adhan is called, the Shaytan flees, as the Messenger السلام, told us. So if you call the Adhan or if the Adhan is on the television, then they may become very uh, upset or angry, or they may just storm out of the room for no apparent reason, or they may say, get this rubbish off or something like this, because they may be possessed. Likewise with the Quran. If they are possessed, then they are going to have on, in, in more than uh, so in most cases, and it's more than likely, they are going to have a hatred of the Qur'an, a dislike of the Qur'an. So if you're, if you're reading the Qur'an, they don't want to be in the same room, or they tell you to stop the recitation of the Qur'an. Okay? Because the Qur'an is a shifa, the Qur'an is a healing, the Qur'an is a mercy. And as Allah says, it only increases those wrongdoers in loss. It only increases the wrongdoers in loss. They may also begin to speak other languages. So perhaps the person, he's never spoken Urdu in his life, or he's never spoken Arabic in his life, suddenly he becomes fluent in Urdu, or he becomes fluent in a different language which he has never ever spoken. Or it may, might not even be, uh, you know, fluency, but he just begins to talk it out of the blue. And you're thinking, how is that possible? How did you get to that situation where you're able to talk this language? Overnight, you are beginning to speak a different language. There may be a sudden increase in strength, a sudden increase in strength or a change in their physical appearance. So for example, there may be a woman who is only five foot two, five foot three, and she's a small woman, yet it takes four or five people just to hold her down. It takes a lot of people just to hold her down. Or there may be a drop in the personal hygiene of the person. Or they may have a love of being isolated and secluded in dirty, filthy places. Okay, a drop, a drop in hygiene. Because the shayateen, they like filthy places. If your body is a place of purity, then they don't want to be in your body. 
And we ha- I've had cases where people, they don't take showers for two, three, four weeks on end. They just don't wash. They hate, you know, they hate the shower. They're scared of the shower all of a sudden. From being somebody who's very clean, suddenly they have a dislike of personal hygiene and their personal hygiene is very, very poor. Or they love to be sat in the toilet. Or they love to just go on, you know, randomly two, three o'clock in the morning. They just go and sit under a tree or they just go to the graveyard or they just wake up and sit in the toilet for hours and hours and hours on end. Likewise, there may be a hatred towards Al-Islam. So if the jinn which is possessing them is non-Muslim, because just as we have Muslims and we have non-Muslims, if the jinn which is possessing this individual is a non-Muslim jinn, then it will have a hatred towards Allah, a hatred towards the Quran, a hatred towards Islam in general. Now, these signs and these symptoms, as I've mentioned, they're fairly general. They're fairly general signs and symptoms. So it may be, for example, that one day a person is upset and the Quran is on or whatever it may be and they just storm out the room, not because of the Quran, but because they're upset. Because they are feeling emotional for whatever reason, so they leave the room. So do we say now this person is possessed? Of course not. We investigate further, what's wrong with you, how are things, etc. And we then take it forward from there. All of these things are just signs and symptoms. They are not surefire ways of knowing that you are possessed for sure. Now let's look at magic. Magic, dear brothers and sisters, magic is a contract between the magician and one or more of the devils, the shayateen, where the magician He does acts of worship for the shayateen in return for the shayateen doing acts of obedience for him. So the magician, he worships them, prostrates to them, he glorifies them, he, you know, humiliates himself in front of them in order that they will then begin to work for him. So with magic, what we have to understand is that it displays many of the same characteristics as jinn possession. Because when that magician, he does these acts of worship to these, uh, to these jinn, those jinn are then going to go and possess the individual. They're going to go and then try and harm this individual, try and carry out the reason and the mission with which they were sent. So it's going to have a lot of the same characteristics. Signs of magic. Magic usually it will affect one particular aspect for example your marriage okay so somebody has done magic on you to try and break up your marriage and ruin your marriage so now it's not necessarily going to affect your work life it may not accept uh, you know affect your health however it will affect your marriage or somebody he wants you to lose your job or to lose your health maybe your health will start to deteriorate but your marriage will be okay so with magic it depends on the, uh, the aims and the objectives of the individual who got the magic done. So if he gets magic done to affect your marriage, then this is what will be affected. Sometimes, however, a person will just say, I don't ever want to see person uh, X. I don't ever want to see him happy. I want to see his life ru- ruined. In that situation, then you may be suffering from one or more different things, maybe bad health and a bad marriage. Maybe you have a good marriage, but you have problems with your health, problems with your work. So again, these are just, you know, guidelines where we can try and ascertain perhaps there's a problem and I should seek more uh, knowledge and start seeking some more advice or there is no problem whatsoever. Likewise with dreams. Dreams are uh, a very clear indication that a person may be suffering with magic or with possession which uh, was the result of magic. So if you're constantly dreaming of dogs, if you're constantly dreaming of snakes, if you're constantly dreaming of spiders, if you're constantly dreaming about blood, if you're constantly seeing yourself in a grave or around blood and you're seeing these types of things in your dreams, then it may be that you have uh, serious issues with regards to magic, with regards to jinn possession. So in that situation, I would advise you to make ruqya or to seek ruqya. Likewise, as we've mentioned previously, a dislike of Islam, 
a dislike of the Quran. Why? Because the jinn is there. Remember that magic, it almost always in, in the vast majority of cases, 99.9%, .9%, it comes with jinn. You're going to find these type of blocks. Okay, so I, I you know, somebody has done mag magic on me to prevent me from getting married. I'm going to find like a block on marriage. Whenever I consider somebody for marriage, everything is going fine. Then suddenly out of the blue, I have a change of heart. And now when I think about getting married, I feel sick and I feel anxious and maybe I begin to vomit, etc. This is more than likely somebody doesn't want you to get married. Somebody's put a block on you getting married or a block on your mind or a block on your health or a block on your wealth. All of these different things. All of these different things, there may be signs and symptoms of jinn possession. Likewise, suffering from illnesses that doctors simply cannot explain. Suffering from illnesses that doctors cannot explain or suffering with illness after illness after illness. This may be a sign of magic. So for example, I had a case where the, uh, I was told by the jinn during the ruqya, I've given her cancer. I've given this uh, individual, I've given them cancer. So then a few days later, this individual came back and said, I found a lump on my chest. I found a lump on my body. Okay, and I've had this examined by the doctors and they say that it looks like a cancerous lump. I said, look, by Allah, I'm telling you this is not a cancerous lump. Do not go and get chemotherapy, etc. Rather treat this with the book of Allah. Treat this with the sunnah of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Alhamdulillah, within a couple of weeks, this lump, it had disappeared. And there was no need to go for chemotherapy, etc, etc. Now I'm not saying if you find a lump, then that means you're possessed. But what we are saying is that sometimes these illnesses, they have a direct link with jinn possession and with magic. You may find uh, mood swings so that the individual, and this is also a sign of jinn possession, which we didn't mention, the uh, individual, they may have extreme mood swings, go from being extremely happy to being extremely sad in an instant. The blinking of an eye, they go from laughing to crying in an instant. Or you may find, and this is very, very important, you may find taweez. So you may find taweez in your house, something that you didn't put there. You may find blood on your doorstep, or you may find blood in your home. You may find uh, uh, animal eggs, so chickens eggs which have been smashed on your doorstep. You may find salt on your doorstep. You may find a dead bird in your garden. Or you may find a dead chicken which has no head, which has been beheaded. You may find all of these different things. And in reality, you know, if you find like a dead animal and there is magic involved, then this is the animal that they would have sacrificed to the jinn. Sacrificed to the shaitan, seeking to come close to him. And then they've thrown that into your house. And then obviously the problems are going to begin. Likewise, with regards to specifically, with regards to uh, marriage. Okay, so there might be a sudden dislike of the spouse. There might be a sudden dislike of your husband or of your wife. A physical hatred towards them. You know, I've had lots of people, they say, when I see my wife, I physically want to kill her. When I, when I see my husband, I physically want to kill him. I had one situation where a brother came and he said, when I look at my wife, I see an animal's head on my wife's shoulders. So of course, if you're looking at your wife and you see an animal looking back at you, then of course this is going to freak you out. You're not going to want to be in this person's company. You're going to want to run far away. And of course, eventually this is going to lead to separation. Likewise, you have with regards to marriage, the situation of not being able to get married. This is very, very common. People do magic on others so that they have a block on their, on their marriage. Because you were, you, know, you were set up to marry your uncle's son or your uncle's daughter or somebody else's son or somebody else's daughter. In the end, you didn't get married to them. You got married to somebody else. And what happened? They put magic on or you were due to get married to somebody else. So they put magic on you when you refused to marry their, their child or refuse to marry their daughter and now they've put magic on you and you can't get married. You're finding it difficult to get married and all of this is from magic. And like I've mentioned brothers and sisters, this is a massive topic and we can spend hours and hours and hours discussing it. But in reality what I'm doing, I'm just giving you some of the main signs, some of the main symptoms. So perhaps something has been going on with you for a, a while now and you don't 
know or you didn't know. So this will uh, cause you to go and to research a little bit further, to go and call a Raqi who is upon the Quran and the Sunnah, and then you can start your journey from there. Bi'idhnillahi tabaraka wa ta'ala. Dabba is a beast, and it is mentioned in the Bible as well. The beast that it glorifies in the name of Allah, but you cannot understand their praise. 20 years ago, thousands of American troops were racing across the deserts of Iraq toward Baghdad to invade Iraq. Experience the world's best rated Muslim streaming platform now.